Hello, and welcome to Game Theory. I'm Professor Naomi Utgoff of the United States Naval Academy, and in this video, we'll describe the ascending clock auction and its equilibrium bidding strategy. We'll give a formal description of the ascending clock auction and its various cousins we see in the real world. The ascending clock auction is in fact a dynamic game of incomplete information, but we'll shoehorn it into our discussion of auctions since it is such a common format. Here is a fairly formal description of the ascending clock auction. Bidders' types are privately known and independently distributed. Every bidder sees the clock price, which starts at zero and increases smoothly. The clock price represents the price the winner would pay if the auction ended right now. Every bidder decides at each price whether to exit the auction. The auction ends when exactly one bidder remains in and all others have dropped out. The remaining bidder wins and pays the price shown on the clock. The Japanese button auction is exactly the ascending clock auction. Each bidder starts by holding down a button to indicate that she is in. As the clock price rises, a bidder drops out by releasing her button. There are some close cousins of the ascending clock auction out there. There is the so-called English auction, in which the bidders call out prices while the auctioneer moderates and possibly seeks further bids. eBay and others run a clock proxy auction in which each bidder inputs the price at which she would drop out and eBay increments the clock price and who is still in accordingly. This auction is called a proxy auction because eBay does the actual bidding on behalf of every bidder. Let's turn our attention to the equilibrium bidding strategy of this game. We'll argue that each player has a weekly dominant strategy. First, a bidder who wins at a clock price B above her valuation is worse off compared to losing at B. Therefore, a bidder should be out by the time the clock price exceeds her valuation. Second, a bidder who is out when the auction ends at a clock price B below her valuation is worse off than if she had won the auction at the clock price B. Therefore, a bidder should remain in as long as the clock price is less than her valuation. The preceding arguments did not rely on any conditions on other bidder strategies. The conclusion is that it is weakly dominant for a bidder to drop out exactly when the clock price is equal to her valuation. As part of this weak dominance argument, we did not make any use of beliefs in our equilibrium analysis. The equilibrium bidding strategy weakly dominates all other bidding strategies because it leaves the bidder possibly better off and never worse off than any other strategy. There remains one important feature about this equilibrium, namely that it is efficient in the sense that the bidder with the highest valuation wins the object. In particular, she wins when the clock price shows the highest valuation belonging to a losing bidder. The seller has thus discovered the highest price the market will bear, and the winner receives a discount because she wins at a clock price that is below her own valuation. This discount is called informational rent, the price the seller pays the buyer for the seller's price discovery. Thanks so much for watching this video about the ascending clock auction and its equilibrium bidding strategy. In the next video, We'll study the second price sealed bid, or Vickery auction.